Hello, hello, hello. We are back and by popular demand, uh, I'm going to do some problems for you today. So we are going to do, this is uh, AP Calculus Rules for Differentiation Practice A. I did not get a chance in class to do 5 through 9 and number 12, so I'll take a look at those right now. So first of all, let's look at number 5. Number 5, find the equation of the tangent line to the function. Now it gives in this function, and this function is of a form similar to what we saw up here in letter I. And if you recall back, what we did in letter I is we changed this form before we actually did the problem. We're trying to find the equation of the tangent line at the point where x is equal to 1. So we need two things if we're going to write the equation for a line. To write the equation for a line, we need the slope, and we'll also need a point. In order to get the slope, I'm going to take the derivative, and then I'm going to plug in. Taking the derivative and then plugging in will give me the slope. To get the point, I'm going to plug x equals 1 into the original equation. Without further ado, here goes. So to take this derivative, we could use the quotient rule, which you're going to be becoming more familiar with as we go. We also could change the form of this thing. We could make this x squared over 2x plus x over 2x minus 2 over 2x. And that's the same as 1 half x plus 1 half and then minus x to the negative 1. Taking the derivative of that, I'm going to have 1 half plus 1 over x squared. To get the slope of my tangent line, I'm simply going to plug into the derivative. I'm going to take y prime of 1. y prime of 1 is just going to be 1 half plus 1 over 1 squared, or 3 halves. And I'm also going to plug in and get this point. So y of 1, which would be uh, negative 1 half. Once I have the slope, this is my slope. And once I have a point, my point is 1 comma negative 1 half, it's just a matter of using the slope-intercept form and rewriting the equation. So this is y plus a half is equal to 3 halves times x minus 1. Okay? There's the first one. All right, let's move on to number 6. Now we're looking for a normal line. A normal line is the negative reciprocal of the slope. So to get the slope, we can use our slope equation. A derivative is just a slope equation. So if I can figure out what y prime of 2 is, it'll be pretty easy for me to get the slope of the normal line. So let's go ahead and do that. y prime of 2. So what is y prime going to be? y prime is going to be 3x squared minus 5. I'm trying to find y prime at 2. My solution there is going to be 3 times 2 squared minus 5, or 7. That's my slope. That's the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the normal line, then, would be negative 1 seventh. I also need to find a point that is on this graph. And a point that's on this graph is going to be y of 2. That's 2 cubed minus 5 times 2 plus 1. So the point that is on this graph is the point 2, negative 1. Now I can write the equation for the normal line. Number 7, find the points where the tangent line is parallel to the x-axis. When something is parallel to the x-axis, another way of saying that is it has a slope of 0. Right? The x-axis has a slope of 0, so something parallel to it must have the same slope, which in this case is 0. So I'm going to take this derivative. The derivative here is 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. I'm going to set that equal to 0. This is a little bit different. I'm trying to find the x values where this happens. So I don't, I'm not going to plug in an x value. I'm trying to figure out where this happens. I just have to solve this equation. I can factor out a 3. And sorry for the limited space today. In the two places where this happens, oops, excuse me, that's a 1, I'm sorry. 
the two places where this happens are at negative 3 and at x equals 1. You just want to double check that neither one of those has any issues or any, like, you know, it causes any uh, places where the original function would be undefined or anything like that. Then if we really wanted to finish this off, we would want to plug in and figure out, it says find the points on the curve, not the x values. So our actual answer would be, um, we would plug back into this uh, y equation, and we would get 1 to the third plus 3 times 1 squared minus 9 plus 7. Uh, what's that? That's 4, negative 5, that's 2. Hopefully I'm not messing anything up here. This is negative 3, that's negative 27. Uh, negative 54, woo, uh, that's negative 27. I believe that's negative 20. I believe those are the two points there. Okay. For number 8, it says find all the x values. So y prime is equal to 3x squared plus 1. Find all the x values where the slope is 4. This is my slope equation. A derivative is a slope equation. A derivative is an instantaneous rate of change. A derivative can be interpreted as the slope of the tangent line, and a derivative, yes, is also an equation for just slope. So we can go ahead and take this thing and set it equal to 4. All we're trying to figure out is for what x values this happens. This happens when x is either equal to positive or negative 1. Those are the x values where the slope is 4. Excuse me, number 9 is kind of strange. Number 9 is only strange because you have to read it carefully. It says the normal line, the normal line to the graph at 1, 2 passes through this point. Ooh, it's on that equation. And you're trying to find the equation of f prime of 1. That's what we're trying to find. So we're trying to find f prime of 1, or the slope of the tangent line at 1, or the instantaneous rate of change at 1. So, what do we know is true? The normal line at 1, 2 passes through the point negative 1, 1. So let's find the slope of the normal line. The slope of the normal line at x is equal to 1 is 2 minus 1 all over 1 minus negative 1. That's a half. What does that mean that the slope of the tangent line is? That's right, it's negative 2. The slope of the tangent line, oh good golly, that's what this is asking for. That's the slope of the tangent line. That's the instantaneous rate of change. That's what we just found. The answer is negative 2. So f prime of 1 is negative 2. All right, last one. Number 11, f of x equals the square root of x. Find c, the rate of change of f at x equals c is twice the rate of change at x equals 1. All right, so let's first of all take the derivative. This is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. If you have trouble with that, oops. If you have trouble with that, go ahead and rewrite this as x to the 1 half power. So the 1 half comes to the front. When I take the derivative, the 1 half comes to the front, and I take 1 away from the exponent piece. x to the negative 1 half is just 1 over the square root of x. So what is the rate of change at 1? The rate of change, or the derivative at 1, is equal to 1 half. We're trying to figure out when the rate of change, for what value of c is the rate of change, equal to twice that. So when is it equal to 1? That's going to equal when c is equal to a fourth. Right? That's the square root of 1 half, or 1 half squared, I'm sorry, which is just 1 fourth. So looking at this thing, the rate of change at x is equal to 1. Rate of change is just the derivative at x equals 1. That came out to 1 half. We're trying to find the place, the c value, where it's twice that 1 half. So twice 1 half is 1. We're trying to figure out where the derivative, for what value of c, will that derivative equal 1. And we can just plug in. Okay. I hope that was helpful. Have a good day.